Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be going through how living organisms change the environment for your AQA, A level in environmental science. Now to go with this, we have so, so many resources because I know they're quite hard to find for A level in environmental science. So once you finish watching the video, you can go down to the description and check out everything else on my website. level environmental science. Topic 1. The living environment. Lesson 2. How living organisms change the environment. Photosynthetic bacteria. Single-celled photosynthetic bacteria, known as cyanobacteria, can be found living in the oceans. If you think back to GCSE biology, where you learned what the products of photosynthesis are, you will know that these tiny organisms were the first to release diatomic oxygen into the ocean. At that time, the ocean was full of iron, so when the oxygen was released, they combined to form iron oxide, which is insoluble, so sank to the ocean floor. This created the beautiful structures we can see around the world today, known as banded iron formation. Once all the iron was converted, the oxygen began to continually increase in concentration in the water until it began exsolving into the atmosphere. At this point, any anaerobic organisms that don't require oxygen were put at quite a disadvantage, but this allowed more complex aerobic organisms to evolve. Furthermore, the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere also enabled the formation of a very important molecule known as ozone. The diatomic molecules were split by the incoming UV radiation to form two monatomic atoms in a process known as photolysis. These monatomic atoms could then combine with another diatomic molecule to form ozone. This ozone layer is vital in helping reduce the amount of harmful UV radiation that reaches the Earth's surface. Another benefit of having photosynthetic organisms on the Earth was that they could begin sequestering carbon into their cells and tissues. As we all know, plants take in CO2 during this process and store it in their biomass which allowed the reduction of CO2 in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a powerful greenhouse gas, meaning it retains heat in the atmosphere, causing global warming. So, the reduction of this was advantageous as it prevented long-term temperature increase despite the brightness of the sun increasing over time. Biogeochemical cycles are incredibly important processes that recycle the molecules and atoms we need to stay alive such as nitrates and carbon. As more and more organisms evolved over time, interconnected pathways began to develop, which means that the small amount of the nutrients we have available on Earth can support life continuously without them becoming depleted over time. Arguably, the most important organisms in these cycles are the decomposers and detritivores, which break down dead organic matter to release the nutrients locked inside dead organisms so they can be used again. Just think, the carbon in your body could have once helped form a dinosaur. We will study the BGCs in more detail later in the course. The final process that occurred because of life evolving is transpiration. Transpiration is the process of plants taking in water at their roots and then releasing it at their leaves by evaporation. This returns water vapour to the atmosphere which then allows for more rainfall in that area, allowing even more plants to survive. It is also a vital process in the water cycle, which we will cover in the physical environment topic. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. 